In Flanders fields, the poppies blow between the crosses, row on row. That mark our place, and in the sky, the larks still bravely singing fly. Scarce heard amid the guns below. Dear Jessie, I hope I will be there in time for the christening. I have to go, love, and I ask God to look after you till I return. Alexander me was declared missing, believed killed in the Battle of Passchendaele. Alexander me was a farmer from Dunedin who went on war and never returned. On 4th August 1914, Britain declared war on Germany. Where Britain went, New Zealand followed its empire. Over 100,000 New Zealanders went on war. They were not just soldiers. They were farmers, carpenters, sailors, and some even miners. Over 2,000 Maori, alongside 460, Pacific Islanders served during the war. Some were nervous, some eager to see the world, but all were bound for a war that defined our history. Being so far away from home made New Zealanders very aware of who they were and where they came from. With this pride, they called themselves Kiwis. For four years, our soldiers fought in the battles from Gallipoli to the Western Front and the Middle East. Now, we often hear stories of our boys riding into town to rush to enlist in the war. But less is heard of those 550 women who served as New Zealand Army nurses. They enlisted for the same reasons as their fellow men. Duty, patriotism, and adventure. Edna Pengeli was one of those nurses who set off that day on board the SS Rotorua. They lived in cramped accommodations with shortage of food, water, no proper sanitation. These were women. They were poorly paid. They did everything from cleaning floors swilling out bedpans to dressing wounds and scars. Whilst in Egypt, Sister Edna wrote, the work was punishing. It was unbearably hot. There were unburied bodies, swarms of flies, and the stench of the dead made living conditions even worse. Most patients did not die from gunshots, but illnesses like dysentery and typhoid. On 23rd October 1915, the New Zealand Army Nursing Service experienced their greatest disaster ever. British ship Marquette was sunk by a German torpedo in the Aegean Sea. Sister Catherine Fox from Auckland was one of the 10 nurses who drowned that day. Gunshots. At night, wrote one nurse, one can hear the bombing very clearly. They learned to sleep through the sounds of the guns and the bombs, not knowing when their shelter might be hit. Pretty scary, isn't it? When most of us can't even sleep through the sound of thunder. Soldiers are shot at, shelled, and gasped, they watched their friends die. They live in the mud with huge rats, lice in their uniforms itching. Some men stop talking, have nightmares, lose control of their limbs. Sister Edna wrote, for some patients, nothing could be done. We would simply sit and hold their hands. Now, Unlike what we see on Shortland Street, our nurses experienced the horrors of war firsthand, some paying the ultimate price. Imagine 
the sea. Cold winters, deep trenches around tents, nurses with frostbite and trench feet. Operations being performed without a break for up to 36 hours while bombs explode all around you. Amputation is often the only option. There are no antibiotics. Sister Elsie Gray wrote, it's terrible to see these men become paralyzed, minus arms and legs or eyes. I wonder what it would be like to work with blood and wounded men, to watch people die every day. The nurses were physically and emotionally exhausted, but they always put the soldiers' pain before their own. A true calling of nursing, saving human life. The New Zealand men were glad to be cared for by women from their own country. They often idealized these nurses as white-veiled angels of mercy. Finally, at the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month, silence fell across the battlefields of Europe. The war came to an end. Sister Edna wrote, many people went to London, where it was quite mad, with dancing in the streets. In 1919, Sister Edna finally returned home to New Zealand. The nurses were not given the same importance as the returning soldiers, but the soldiers never forgot these brave and selfless women and the care they gave them. Edna Pengeli was awarded the Royal Red Cross, second class in 1917 and first class in 1919. This war changed the lives of each and every New Zealander. New Zealanders are proud of their contribution, but at the cost of 26 New Zealand nurses who lost their lives, 41,000 wounded, and 18,500 dead. We are the dead. Short days ago, we lived, felt dawn, so sunset low, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields.